Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu was afforded the great opportunity of uh, speaking to the Senate, and he spoke as articulately as he always does. He hit on a numerous, very fundamental, critical points. Too many for me to actually discuss, but I do want to focus on one because this point actually relates to us and how we respond. These protesters chant from the river to the sea, but do many don't have a clue what river and what sea they're talking about. They not only get an F in geography, they get an F in history. They call Israel, they call Israel a colonialist state. Don't they know that the land of Israel is where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob prayed, where Isaiah and Jeremiah preached? and where David and Solomon ruled. For nearly 4,000 years, the land of Israel has been the homeland of the Jewish people. It's always been our home. It will always be our home. You see, it's important not only that we sit and, uh, that we sit and applaud um, all of the points that um, Prime Minister Netanyahu made, but what's even far more, far more far more important than that is to actually ask ourselves what we can take from this and how we can then contribute to what is going on in the world in a very productive way, what's going on in Israel in a very productive way. One of the points that he made was that all of these protesters whether they be adults or they be, you know, kids, college kids, right? Not only do they get an F in geography, because when you ask them, you know, what river and what sea are you talking about? Can you name them? Where are they? Where are they located? They have no idea. And it's, it's sad, although this has always been the case, that human beings can be brought to such a, a strong emotional state that they will actually take a stand for something, march, yell, um, violate the law, destroy things, hurt other people, all in the name of something that they have no concept of and haven't given a few minutes to actually think about. That is terrible, terrible tragedy. And that's why he said they get an F in geography. They don't even know what river and what sea. But not only do they get an F in geography, they get an F in history. You know how they get an F in history? He listed how the land of Israel was given to our forefather Abraham. That's who God promised the land of Israel to, which is about 4,000 years ago that God promised the land to Israel uh, to, to Abraham. And Abraham actually then moved there and God said, this will be your land. And then in fact, uh, a few hundred years later, the Jewish people did go into the land of Israel and conquer it. King David, King Solomon, and we can go on and on, the long history of the Jewish kings and the prophets that lived there. And our presence has been there since. And they accuse us of colonialism. It's complete outrage. But I'm not going on a rant about that now because the, the, the outrage goes is endless of the nonsense and the, the, the complete, uh, you know, the complete, absolute, blatant lies that people say every day. But here's what I want to tell you, that in the Talmud, um, Tractate Sota, at the very end of this tractate, in, uh, on page 49b, the, the Talmud lists 15 signs that we are at the period of Ikvos Mashiach, which means the heels of Mashiach. That means we're at the threshold of the coming of Mashiach. And the very first of the, I want to tell you the first and the 15th of these 15 um, signs that we are at the very threshold of Mashiach. The first one is Chutzpah Yazga, that Chutzpah insolence is going to be increased enormously. What is the greatest level of chutzpah? The greatest level of chutzpah is when someone can tell you while they're looking at something that's black, that it's white. And that when they're looking at something that's white, that it's black. That is the ultimate chutzpah, to just straight out lie. There's no shame whatsoever before the truth. And that is exactly what the accusations so many, a long list of accusations that Israel is being accused of today. You know, arguing 
with people about them or me trying to disprove them would be a waste of my breath. If someone can actually say that black is, uh, is white and white is black, am I actually going to convince them otherwise? They're not even thinking. Because facts no longer matter. These are the days just before the coming of Mashiach, where facts don't even matter. Where people get an F for geography and for history and claim things in the name of geography and history. And the last of these 15, which is where I want to take you to, the last of these 15 is that how do you know we are in the Ikvis Mashiach, at the hills of Mashiach coming? Because Alma Yesh Lanu Lishan, what do we have to rely on? Alavino Sheva Shemayim, our Father in Heaven. That we've reached a point that it has become clear that we have nothing and no one else to rely on other than our Father in Heaven. You know, we go through life and we often believe because God is hidden from clear view. So we fall into the facade and the belief that, oh, I can rely on my income. I can rely on my exercise for my good health. I can rely on uh, guiding my children that therefore they're going to turn out a certain way. We have all of these different beliefs as if we are in control of things. The reality is that we only, only reliable source, uh, resource that we have right to rely on is God. But we often don't see that. But before the coming of Mashiach, we're going to realize there's literally nothing to rely on. There's no one else to rely on other than God. And that's where we are at now. And you know who has to learn that lesson? You and I have to learn that lesson. That's what we have to realize, that we are at a period where there's no one to rely on. In fact, we're at a period. The Prime Minister came and spoke in America, and he thanked America for all of its support. And we are very grateful for America's support. We have to realize that we don't depend on America. That is a critical point in Israel winning the war against evil. The only way to win the war against evil is when we go to the source of all good, and that is Almighty God, and rely only on God and God alone. And we are grateful for the support that we get from the United States, but we are not dependent on it. This false belief that we have lived in for so many years has actually led us to where we are today. And what we also don't realize, which is for the first time is being tested and it will be shown to be correct, is that when we put our faith in heaven, while thanking all of God's agents who help us, even though some of those agents may say, no, you have to do it differently, and, and are telling us to pull back from actually finishing what we must finish, we are going to see that they will stand by us until the end. Because we will finally demonstrate to the world that there is a level of evil that cannot be negotiated with. And there is a level of evil that is so dark and, so, and their, their, their cult of death is so strong that the only way to deal with it is to obliterate it. And this will do a favor not only for the Jewish people, not only for the Palestinian people who are not involved in this death cult, but to the entire world which is being threatened by what is taking place. And this is what we have to realize. We must stop leaning on any resource other than our Father in heaven. God gave us the land. That's why it is our land. And that's why Jews have lived there for thousands of years uninterrupted. And it will remain our land as long as we remember where we got it and who will ensure that it stays in our hands. And this is how we will stop the evil too, so that it will not be perpetuated by our negotiating with it, but by our being clear about it. And this will be the greatest act of compassion we will offer to our own people, to the Palestinian people, and to all of humanity.